So how's everyone doing? Okay, good. You got a lot of energy. It's late in the afternoon, so I'm glad to hear it. So I'm glad to be here um, and just have a real conversation. I like two-way conversations, so I'm not going to speak a lot. I'm going to ask some questions, get some, get some back and forth going. Um, so Innovation Village, uh, thanks for the introduction. Um, we have 1,300-acre business innovation district in, in central and west Baltimore now. Um, what's, what's really interesting is, you know, we, be, we, we believe two basic things. We believe, number one, everyone matters. And then, number two, that everyone has talent. And because of that, cities like Baltimore can win if we organize that talent in a very particular way around generating small businesses, not just techies, but literally small businesses, neighborhood level retail, and yes, innovation based enterprises so that we solve our communities and, and, and our cities of most pressing needs. And so how do we do that? So we elevate, we literally elevate cities like Baltimore by one, including everyone, creating inclusive economies and putting our entrepreneurs in a position to succeed. And so, uh, you know, Mike Binko, you know, he's a good friend, and the work that they've been doing with Startup Maryland is really interesting. How you need, you need people to bring people together. Um, you know, we, and so we're seeing this in different cities. So, you know, a lot of times we we bag on Baltimore a lot, but this is city by city around the country, trying to figure out what is the future because it's happening at such a fast rate right now. And then on on the top on. On the other side of it, it's really easy to talk about entrepreneurship. It's really easy to talk about st startups. It's really easy to talk about risk taking. And I always liken it to like, it's real easy when we're sitting here in Baltimore to talk about how much money we're going to make when we go and gamble in Vegas, right? And then when we get to Vegas, it's like, you don't want to call home and say, hey, I need a plane ticket home because I just lost everything. <laughs> uh, entrepreneurship is kind of like that, right? It's easy to talk about. It's a lot harder to do. And that's why we go back to what we believe, that everyone has talent. And so the question is, do I really believe that my business is dependent on you? That the success of Innovation Village, in this case, is really dependent on you and everyone in this room. Do I really believe that? And do entrepreneurs really believe, when we talk about ecosystem, we talk about community, do we really believe that the success of our enterprise bringing our idea to market really depends on the person sitting next to you or the person that you haven't met yet or the person that you're about to bump into tomorrow. Now that we're all moving fast forward into the future, now, what I call the now future of the shared economy, what does that really mean? It really means more than ever. We are more connected now in the last 10 years than we have in the previous 5,000 years of human history that's been recorded. I mean, when you really think about the way we're connected, I literally just got up here from the TomTom Tom Innovation Conference in, in Charlottesville, and it was incredible because in Charlottesville, I probably met more people from Richmond and Durham, even though I was just in Richmond a week ago, through people that I met through Mike and Gabe and you know, Larkin Garby's doing incredible, incredible work down in Richmond. And so she was like, did you hear about TomTom? Tom? I was like... What are you talking about? She's like, just show up. I'm like, okay, well, it's the weekend. I got, okay, fit it in. And the amount of just exchange of ideas and then immediate commitment. It was just immediate commitment. It was mutual commitment, not, okay, yeah, we're going to support Innovation Village. No, it was about, oh, we can support each other. Why? Because we have the same challenges. And so, you know, um, when we're talking about, you know, what you have to do to sacrifice to, to, to have a successful enterprise, whatever it is, right? There's sacrifice involved. There's risk-taking involved. And so that's part of the conversation we were going to have today. And um, so it's easier for me to take questions about different types of things you're interested in, because I know we're talking about risk-taking and some of the struggles that go along with being an entrepreneur. So I just want to open up to the floor, and I will answer truthfully and honestly. Whatever you ask. So let's go for it. Any questions around entrepreneurship, startups, and what it really takes? Go ahead. 
Hello, my name is John Rattray. Hi, John. My question is, is can you speak to wanting to speak about an idea without having any sort of patent protection on it uh, and the risks involved with that? So that's a that's a great question. Um, you know, every 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 business every business is different. Every idea is different. Um, I will say that the answer to that five ten years ago is certainly different than how I would answer it now. I would say that right now, um, you know, it's it's always it's always important to protect your intellectual property. So I will state that point blank. It's always important to protect your IP. Um, but not at the expense of getting your idea moving and building teams around your idea. So a lot of time we can do paralysis by analysis and we're just like this. We are in a shared global economy. It's about who moves fast and who builds teams fastest that can get their product into the marketplace. So you, wanna, you definitely want to protect yourself, but you want to focus on other aspects as well, like getting your idea, like what Mike was saying, getting people who support your idea, getting different uh, skill sets around you, build out your management team. Like, you know, we all talk about always, it's about your team. Teams win. And so, you know, it's, you can be an all-star on your own. You have the greatest idea in the world, but unless you have a team around you, you know, someone, when I was speaking at South by Southwest, heard something very profound on a, on a panel because I never really thought about it. They, they asked, what was the difference between Thomas Edison and Nikola, Nikola, Nikola Tesla? And it was like, Edison had a financial backer, J.P. Morgan, and a team behind him in a way that just got his ideas into the market a lot faster. Hi, my name is Francis Guevara. Um, I want to know how you can form that team or how you can find these people and be connected with them. Because this is, I mean, this is my first time I go to an entrepreneurship convention, kind of. And I want to know how I can get more involved in here, into this world. So it, it's, you know, we, so there's the technical side where you have to be strategic. You know, I, I kind of look at it as uh, if you have a band, right? You need a lead singer, you need a guitarist, you need a drummer. You have certain key roles and responsibilities. So no matter what your business is, you need certain key skill positions, right? So you're going to have a visionary leader or the person who has the vision and the strategy and is driving the enterprise. You need a finance person. You need, um, you need an operations person at some point in time. So as you grow, you're going to need different types of, of team members. Um, but it really comes through this. It's really, we call it the big mashup, or we call it peanut butter and jelly. Don't hang around people. If you're peanut butter, if you love peanut butter, don't only hang around people who love peanut butter. Hang around people who are jelly. Hang around people who are bread. And so when you get around people that are different from you, and so that's why when we talk to decision makers, and you know, Mike, Mike and I go through all this all the time, and Gabe especially with his new model, is like decision makers like, we don't understand it. We don't get it. I'm like, it's literally as simple as peanut butter and jelly. It's your peanut butter, your jelly, your bread. We're going to mash you together, and you'll figure it out. You'll figure it out together. Um, and then also through the coaching side, advisors, mentors, peers, asking them, hey, I'm no good at the legal side, right? I'm no good at, you know, IP. So what do I do? Where do I go? Who do I talk to? It's really just keeping connected, really having real authentic conversations with one another. As, and, not, and I'll say, and I'll answer it um, this way, and don't try to do everything by yourself. I think for the type of personalities that tend to take risk and want to start their own enterprise, they're naturally comfortable and confident in themselves, and they feel like they have to do everything. So I, I can't overstate that, you know, we're, so how many people are actually here from Baltimore, like originally, like grew up in the Baltimore area? So, you know, most of us are Ravens fans. I know there's a couple Steelers fans in here. Don't raise your hand. <laughs> there, I say, I knew it was going to come. There's, all, there's always one. But we always say is, you know, Ray Lewis wasn't just Ray Lewis because he was Ray Lewis. He had Ed Reed standing behind him. So it's your team. And while we are all rock stars and individually talented, when we come together as a team, uh, we win. Hi there. Oh, wow. Um, I'm Hong Nguyen. I'm from Fed News. I'm actually here because I'm an entrepreneur moonlighting as a media producer. And so you're saying that you, you know, this, uh, 
is like putting together a band. Mm -hmm. um, I booked artists my whole life. And right now, what do you recommend for somebody who's going from booking artists and producing their music and trying to build a label and you know getting them on ASCAP and stuff to getting it more streamlined um, to be you know, to have this syndication, to have a record label that's fully fu functioning, like you yourself worked in entertainment. What, what advice could you give me? Um, it's really, it's, it, it's, so there's two pieces of it. It's, it's, it's still about your team. I think the way you can build your team, especially in entertainment, is totally different than it was even three years ago. So you can, this is where tech really becomes a tool. It's not tech for tech itself, but tech to make things easier. You can, you can set up deals, you can even produce music, or you can connect musically, like on Smule right now, right? You can literally co-produce music through an app right now, right? So I think it's really coming about coming up with a business model of where you want to find your niche in the marketplace, also understanding where the gap is in the marketplace, and then, um, you know, from a, from a label standpoint, let me ask you this way, so is is the label where you want to go? Is that is that your yeah. goal? Then that's where, from the legal side, just from my experience, <laughs> start with the entertainment lawyer, because they're going to they're going to build the structure that you're going to need based on where you are right now. Um, do you have so you have clients or you have you have acts that you? Uh, yeah, we have a lot of acts. Some of Yeah. Okay. This is my night job. Okay. Um, so this is what you have to do. Uh, so yeah. So you're, so you say start with an entertainment board, build the umbrella first. Yes, and and it's the structuring of it that's okay. the, it's the structuring of it that's key. But I, I I know who you are, so we I'm happy to answer even more detail later um, after after we finish. But yeah, that's awesome though. So how does focusing on an entire city as almost a business idea differ from focusing on an individual business itself? And what kind of challenges do you feel you face with a city like Baltimore? So that's a great question. Um, you know, I think, I th you know, I, I honestly think it's the same. I mean, just from my experience, I've built companies before, um, all different types of industries. It's really the same mindset, it's just the scale is different. But at the end of the day, you really still have to focus on your core business, and you have to focus on execution. Um, so for us, even though we have 1,300 acre district, um, so it's not the entire city, we do have a large geographic area that we have to create the conditions, we have to create the environment where capital can find talent, talent can find capital, Entrepreneurs and startups have real estate, they have capital, and they know where their, their partnerships and teams are going to come from, and then programs that support that. So we call that the four legs of the stool. Um, it's really about real estate, capital, talent, and then programming that ties all that together in a way that supports and scales companies, especially young companies. But at the same time, you have to have a geographic area of focus, and I think that's been part of the challenge, and, and Mike has you know, alluded to, to, to a lot of it, is where we're looking at peer cities that are really outperforming. I mean, when I say peer cities, I, w I would even throw in, you know, Chattanooga, right? Chattanooga is out punching its weight when it comes to innovation. I'm in Charlottesville hearing about Chattanooga, right? And it's you look in the news around innovation, and they're like, innovation district, Chattanooga, the stories that are coming out of that are, you know, being celebrated, and it's I'm like, hey, right on, you're doing great. But... In Baltimore, I think it's very hard for capital to find where the talent is. See, I'm getting a lot of nods. It's like, and <laughs> for talent to actually find where the capital is. And do we have inclusive real estate-based places and spaces that facilitate that? So I think a lot of stuff happens around universities here in this town, which is great, but not everybody goes to a university. You know, you have... How, you know, you have 600-some thousand people in this town. How many actually attend local universities here? So there's a whole market out there where I really feel like what we've already demonstrated in a very short period of time is that you still have to remain focused on 
building companies and that create jobs that people in the city can actually work in. And so there's that matching up of the pipeline of skill sets, talent, and also what the industries of the future require as far as skill sets and having people like us connect those dots. I think that's, that's what's going to make Baltimore really stand out globally is when we figure out how to train people with the skills that are going to be necessary for the jobs of the future. Yes. Um, kind of piggybacking off of what she was saying in the front, as far as like, my name's Jeffrey Banks, and I spoke a word article like, you know, the only I have recorded, but realizing with CDs and all that you can do digitally, there's a learning curve. I consider things like this kind of like business speed dating, but yep. you know, there is the thing of. My concern, comment, question would be more so that the one-man band, because you really can trust a whole lot of folks, and mm -hmm. if you do partner with people, I mean, I guess your thoughts on more consultants for hire, because I mean, like, you know, a lot of lawyers aren't going to be part of your team. You want to pay me, that's fine, and a lot of times they may try to take you down a rabbit hole to keep you paying, even though you really don't have that shoestring, but if you try and talk about lawyers or accountants or all the other type of stuff, I mean, pretty much like when I did produce my one CD, you know, most producers were just concerned about getting that quick money yep. and wasn't trying to be have like some longevity of, I know, a and r shop consider radio and consider, and you've worked in entertainment, but what's your thought on consultants, people who really just want to get hired and that creates jobs but not really team building, because coming from the church saying Nehemiah, I'm a little bit of one, there's not many people trying to help build with me, they just want to be on what you on and up there. Yep. So I, I, I'll say this, more so than ever now, talent it dominates everything. If you have talent and you've really applied yourself to your craft and, and you have talent, you can go out and get followers. I mean, you, you can go out and get a following of 2,000 people that are into your thing, it's, e it's, it's easier to do now than it's ever been, right? And so with that following, one of the things that we do with a lot of our enterprises is we, we, we go out and show and prove first. So we show that, okay, we have this many customers or this many people who are viewers or, or, or in this case, you have this many followers of your art. And what that's going to do is it's going to at attract the attention of different team members that you're going to need, whether it's entertainment attorney or an accountant, and get them to invest in your future based on what you've already demonstrated you can deliver. You know, Mike, Mike used the term equity at that point in time. We're doing the same thing with Innovation Village. We have one of the top law firms in the Mid-Atlantic. Once they saw how much deal flow we were able to generate, and at the same time, have the support of you know, thousands of people in the city we got them pro bono. So they're handling all our real estate transactions and all our venture transactions and now all our talent acquisition transactions. Um, so I think that's probably the best way to do it. I will also agree with you um, that doing it on a consulting basis um, is probably the best way before you get locked into a long-term contractual situation. You want them to be able to prove that they have as much talent doing what they do as you have talent doing what you do. Well, I mean, I guess just offline, the quick thing would just be like to monetize. I mean, I got 10,000 social media followers, but still, like, you know, even though people can be impressed with your skill and barter into skill, you know, some people will try to pimp that bartering or yep. free or whatever the case is. You can make somebody a lot of money, but that reciprocity yep. isn't quite there. So I'd say this is a perfect example where have some advisors who can give you that 360 view. Um, you always bounce it off of people to say, hey, should I trust this situation? What do you think about this situation? How would you structure this situation? Um, and I can connect you with actually a couple people who can help you with that. Happy to do it. Okay.
think it's everything. It's and resources come in different forms. And it's not just capital, um, but it's relationships. And I think, you know, our relationships, our networks, net, your network is now your most important resource because in your network, you're going to find the solution to your to your challenge. It's you know, we, we talk about serendipity a lot just because it's amazing when people come together. We like we all wear the same jersey, the same color. We're all running the same plays together. When people believe in one another and you start supporting each other, it's amazing what comes out of your own network. It comes, it, it's almost like gravitational pull. It comes to you. Um, so, yeah, the resources are incredibly important. I think pulling those resources in a way that makes sense is also important, which is why you need other team members. I'm not great at every, every everything. I was like, seriously, it's the marketing part, and the, there's a whole lot of stuff I'm not good at. So what I do is I just talk to people and say, hey, I'm not good at it. You and I just had a conversation the other day. You're like, I know somebody. I mean, literally, this guy was saw me in his office, and I'm going into the elevator, and he runs out and says, hey, I have someone to connect you to. Now, the important piece of that is we're only good as good as our response to the resource offered. So how we handle each other's relationships within our network is actually vital to how fast you can bring resources to bear and also manage those resources appropriately. Yes, and so, and I think this ties together a couple, the way I'll answer this ties together a couple of questions about IP and trust. We always talk about creating win-wins from day one. If you are focused on going to the person that you need help from and saying, first, what can I do for you? What's your biggest challenge? Let's figure out together how we solve each other's challenges automatically that establishes the basis of the relationship on trust as opposed to selfishness. And then from there, you can really talk about how you bring those resources together in a way that makes sense, but also being very clear with the other person based on what they, what they need or what they want, that you're going to move in a way that creates benefit for them while they're creating benefit for you. With us, that's been the sense of mutuality and the culture that we've established with Innovation Village, where with, whether it was our university partners or entrepreneurs or venture capital partners or our real estate developer partners, we automatically delivered value to them first before we even asked for anything in return. Yes. How short? Sorry, yeah. Thank like you we're so done? Much. Okay, great. Thank you.